Welcome back folks, my name is Last No Meal and today we're gonna be talking about Baldur's Gate 3. This is probably one of the most requested videos on the channel recently because ever since this game came out people were asking if I'm going to do a video on it and of course because for the past couple of days I have been playing this game non-stop. Also, this video is brought to you by GOG, I've been a partner with GOG for quite some time and they were very happy to provide a key for Baldur's Gate 3. You can use my code down below if you want to buy Baldur's Gate 3 on GOG, which remember is DRM free, so that's another plus, or you can use it to buy something else like Witcher, Cyberpunk or any game whatsoever with no additional cost you're gonna be helping the channel, so check out GOG, check out the link in the description, and let's continue with the video. But also keep in mind, I wasn't someone who played the game in early access, so when Baldur's Gate 3 came out, that's when I jumped into it for the first time and experienced everything this game has to offer. And I'm going to be honest straight away, this is probably one of the most important games which are going to come out this year for two reasons. Reason number one is how they handled selling that title and how they generally behave with the community and their players. So when this game came out, it's going to have one thing, a full game. They're not going to be including any microtransactions or anything else in the future, which we got used to from the gaming industry and which put a lot of people and gaming into a bad taste, you know, oh this game is... Oh, good, but it also has a bunch of microtransactions and ways you can spend your money. But on the other side, you have a game like Baldur's Gate, which reminded me of how games used to come out before. You know, you have the game, you buy the game, you play the game. You don't have to worry about buying extra booster packs or this or that. So just because of that, I think it's important that other companies and publishers see that you can do it this way and still make huge amounts of money because look at the amount of people playing Baldur's Gate 3. This game is selling. And the second reason why I think this game is incredibly important is because of it's going to bring more attention to turn-based RPGs and not just turn-based RPGs in general but also this playstyle which kind of relies on tabletop or D&D rules, where you're gonna be rolling a dice for perception check, or where you're gonna be rolling a dice for attacks, which obviously in the game is gonna be calculated in a different way, you're not gonna be rolling a dice for every single attack, but most of that stuff is kinda what D&D is and what tabletop games in general are, especially tabletop RPGs. And most of my friends and people I talk to when I tell them about, about Baldur's Gate in general, usually it's like, I'm not sure if I want to play a turn-based RPG because, yes, getting people, especially in the mainstream, to play turn-based RPGs is tough because people want action, people want to see everything happening straight away. And because of people, of those same people who were not really going into turn-based RPGs, now they're playing Baldur's Gate 3. So it is incredible hard work and I think it's done by Larian really well. To be able to bring those people who don't really play turn-based RPGs in general or all that much to play this. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm also one of the people who's not gonna be going into every turn-based RPG. Of course, this one and before when I started playing games in the past when there was uh, Baldur's Gate 2 and Neverwinter Nights and so on. All of those games are now bringing this nostalgia into Baldur's Gate 3 and that's why I'm playing it and also because of the way this game is done, the way combat is done, the way uh, RPG is done in general when it comes to choices you make, to dialogue, to characters, is done incredibly well that I don't even feel the constraints and maybe the problems that turn-based RPGs have, because it's done incredibly well. And because of it, because of this game, more people are gonna be getting into this, more people are gonna be getting into Divinity, Original Sin, and so on. So. In the nutshell, this is a big plus. Now when it comes to the game itself, so the gameplay of Baldur's Gate is pretty much a combination of you being able to control where your party or where well, your character is going to be able to go throughout the map, but when the combat starts it turns into, you know, turn-based. But at the same time, you can use various tactics from items you get into the game through spells and abilities your character has and also extra stuff like for example using certain bombs or using certain buffs for your character which is going to make that fight easier and turn it into your favor. 
And at the same time, because of level design, which I'm gonna be going into in a second, you can also use the environment around you to craft your tactics and to defeat enemies in an easier way. And usually if I found myself in the game having problems to defeat something, I always go back and try to revise my strategy. Of course, if you're gonna be going for an ethical playthrough, then you're not gonna be safe coming or anything like that. But when I'm going for into a game for the first time and I want to learn mechanics of it, usually I'm gonna be doing it, you know, in the first playthrough, then the second playthrough, things are going to be you know, going to hard difficulty and so on. But in general, like, the game by itself uses this environment so much that you can basically do anything in a few hits and completely demolish most of the bosses. It is that good. And besides adventuring, of course, you're gonna be going into your camp, there's gonna be a lot of discussions there with the characters overall. And one of the things which I really like about this game is most of the characters, like 99% of the characters you meet throughout the game, not just your companions, which also have enough depth and the voice acting is amazing, to the point where you get to know those characters more and you start caring about some of them, or you start hating some of them because of their decisions and what they talk about in general. And that's what I like about this, because personalities of those characters, of your followers, are going to be sometimes drastically different. They're not gonna be going along with each other sometimes. Maybe sometimes there's gonna be sparks, there's gonna be problems. And all of that you have to resolve through roleplay, through dialogue, through doing certain checks on your charisma or per perception or whatever. So all of those micro decisions you make throughout the game, they paint a full picture and that's what I like about this because I haven't been in a single situation so far where I felt oh, I could do maybe something else here. No, every single time the game asked, how do you want to approach the situation? Then you can decide for yourself. Now again, speaking of characters and voice acting, I mean, in general, it's done incredibly well. Like every single companion that it goes along with me on my journey or who is in the camp, there is always something interesting about them. They're going to have a backstory. There is going to be something deep around them. Maybe they made some mistakes in the past and now they have to pay for them and so on and so on, but all of that is sometimes going to result in how you make your decisions and how also the story is going to progress further. But not just that, what I noticed is that some of these smaller missions in this game or maybe some random encounter with some whatever character, the voice acting is going to be done incredibly well, the characters they're playing were incredible, detailed, deep and they felt like they were a part of this world, they didn't really feel like, oh, there's an NPC standing there, they felt like they are there for a reason, that is something you cannot really achieve easily in game design, so what they did here is definitely, definitely something I'm going to applaud. Now when it comes to level design, what I talked about, so there is going to be a few situations in the game where I said, okay, let me go look around the environment, see if I can get something which is going to help me, and yes, Every single time you want to explore a little more and you want to go behind some closed doors maybe or you want to loot a certain chest, there is going to be a possibility you're gonna be getting something which is going to help you a lot, not just on the quest you are, but also during a fight. During one of the areas, for example, in the game without spoiling it, I had a trouble saying like, how am I going to defeat this many enemies throughout the game without losing too much HP or losing too many potions or whatever. So what I did is use my favorite weapon in the game and those are fire wine barrels. Yes, you're able to take a barrel obviously into your inventory and you cannot take all of them because they have their weight and that's cool. I took the barrels, I got them into a zone where I had to be and I blew everyone up. It was that simple but because the game allowed me to do it, and afterwards I haven't really broken the game in any way, it still continued its flow, is what made it really stand out for me. Or I can just go and do something else and, you know, utilize maybe less environment and more spells and all of that, but the choice is on me. And also it's good that basically every single time when there is, should be a fight, you also have a possibility or a way to resolve that without fighting. Now sometimes it's going to be hard, sometimes you're not gonna be succeeding, but that's the beauty of an RPG, you know, your character is going to be your character, so sometimes maybe your character just doesn't know what to do in that situation, so you have to pay the price. 
or maybe in some other situations your character which you made for a certain class or race is gonna be using a lot more of that and you're gonna be getting an advantage but I felt like every single time I said okay my character has a certain advantage it also contrasts itself with a certain disadvantage which comes later which I'm not saying it in a bad way it's more like you cannot be fully overpowered I mean there are some ways you can do it obviously through cheesing but at the same time it didn't really feel like I was too OP and because of that I always had to think a lot more who I'm gonna be fighting and how I'm gonna be doing those fights. Generally when it comes to RPG design this is probably one of the most detailed RPGs out there so it allows you to do anything if you want to befriend someone and then betray them later on or maybe you don't want them to attack straight away so you're going to say oh you're my friend and then you're going to blow him up for example all of those things can be done and I'm really glad that um, games come out like this which give me this opportunity because sometimes in some other RPGs obviously due to constraints of those RPGs I wasn't able to do that usually when you make a certain decision it's going to be final but not in Baldur's Gate things can turn around like this straight away if you decide oh, I'm going to destroy this person or I'm going to help this person and that's what I like about it you can finesse people around through combat, through speech, through charisma, through all of that and it's all going to benefit you in a certain way and there's gonna be multiple ways of finishing that. Your class, your race, your everything does play a role where sometimes you're gonna be able to have some extra dialogue which might help you or not so those things are definitely gonna be present in the game. When it comes to music it is amazing honestly like the soundtrack and the main menu the soundtrack where you go and basically do stuff throughout the world is really nice and sometimes I just you know found myself just standing in one place listening to the music a little bit because for me music is incredibly important in video games if music is not right it doesn't really paint the full picture for me of the world this one does definitely the music is nice it can go from medieval to a little bit more haunting or a little bit more modern in that sense but it never actually stands out too much in a way that you're saying oh this doesn't fit here so when it comes to music when it comes to other sounds also in the game like sound design is just nice and it helps out a lot in this game because those details they make people see above being turn-based so even if you're not a fan of it because of those details because of freedom you have and decisions you can make you're gonna be playing this also for the end did I encounter any bugs well when it comes to bugs there were a few I haven't had any crashes to be honest or anything like that so a few things which happened to me was I think one of the most constant things which happen to me is in fights like an AI is gonna be doing something they're gonna walk one meter and they're going to stop and nothing is going to happen for 10 15 20 seconds and those things sometimes can be a little bit annoying where you're just waiting like okay what are you going to do are you going to do something else are you going to attack or not so sometimes it seems to me that AI kind of glitches out and just stands in one place and then after 15 seconds turn goes to you I don't know why that happens but it happens sometimes also during dialogue sometimes it can hang for a few seconds like a, a character is gonna be looking at you like this and you're like are you speaking are you finished so those things and also sometimes during dialogue I have noticed that for example let's say they're speaking about someone and let's say that person is or an object is on the ground they're gonna be saying look at this person or this object the camera pans to it there is nothing so the object or a person is gonna be missing so the entire NPC model is gonna be missing that happened to me a few times basically but it wasn't too annoying to that sense and also one annoying thing can be sometimes like for example when it comes to party and where they walk and paths they choose sometimes you really have to micromanage them especially around traps because they're not gonna be following your direction like you can like do a perception check see a mine and if you don't want to disarm it and you don't or maybe you don't have enough tools you're gonna walk around it and then npc is just gonna be zooming through it and they're going to activate the device so sometimes there is definitely some micromanagement here and there where you have to move one party member and do that but honestly you can also travel alone i mean it's tough it's gonna be <laughs> it's going to be an incredibly tough game if you're gonna be traveling without your party but it is possible i think i think you can do it and pass the game but uh generally being in a party is good so i just wish sometimes 
those party members or well their AI is not gonna be doing something crazy like walking into a trap or am I am I about to do like a certain action I'm about to shoot something NPC walks straight into it and they lose half of their HP but besides everything else like that's pretty much everything I personally encountered when it came to bugs and glitches in this game but nothing which was game breaking for me nothing which was uh you know bad so all in all I'm going to be honest I'm a little bit addicted to this game I'm having a hard time to stop playing it once I start because there is always something new to do or I want to check my inventory a bit or I want to fight this or finish this quest or maybe I want to see what this mechanic can do exploring the game and trying to learn it is honestly amazing and I'm I'm a little bit Sad that I haven't played Early Access before, but um, the game is out now, so of course I will have a full, full review after I finish everything, because honestly, due to the scope of this game, there is no way I can have a full, full, like, one hour review, which I'm planning for this, without experiencing everything this game has to offer, and I think people can understand that. So that's pretty much everything for today. Thank you for watching, don't forget to tell me down below what do you think about Baldur's Gate 3, will you be playing it, are you playing it, what class are you playing, let me know down below in the comments. I tried to remove as much of spoilers as I could, so all of that was basically some little bit of a story and a little bit of gameplay, but I didn't want to go into any big decisions, and basically everything in this gameplay is from act one because i didn't want to go anywhere else into the future with you know footage because that can be a little bit of a bigger spoiler so again don't forget to subscribe and visit us on twitter and discord and also huge thanks to my current patreon supporters if you want to support the channel in an extra way you can always do it through patreon or directly here on youtube if you join this is lkm signing out stay class everyone and i will see you next time bye bye also one more thing before we end, a long time member of the channel, a subscriber of the channel is actually releasing a book called Metamorph. Now keep in mind the book right now is only in Polish, it's gonna be available in English as well, but I'm going to leave you a link down below if you know Polish, if you want to read a very nice sci-fi slash cyberpunk book, check it out, again, link in the description, this is not a paid ad or anything like that, uh, this is basically doing a favor for someone who has been a supporter of this channel for a very long time, so if you want uh, to read the book and you know Polish, well, check it out down below with the link.